good questions again, but since our time is limited to 10 minutes or less, um, we, we'll tackle as many as we can and then make sure you submit your question and watch the show again next week to see if your question is answered. Also, after each video right underneath, you'll see it says sharing is sexy. Just choose your favorite bookmarking site and bookmark this site for me um, under flipping properties or wholesaling real estate or whichever keyword you see is appropriate for this. And uh, that, would be, that would be awesome. Tell your friends about us. We'll answer their questions too. Propertymob.com. We're here for you to answer your questions about real estate, wholesaling, and hopefully get you going on your first deal. So the first question is from Kim Stearns in Jacksonville, Florida. Kim says, what is a bird dog? Well, that's a good question, Kim, and it's a bird dog is a lingo that you only hear real estate investors use. A bird dog is a person who will go out and find deals for you, scout properties out, even talk to the sellers and pre-screen them to make sure that they do want to sell the house, they are motivated, kind of get some basic information from them as, you know, mortgage amount or the reason for the sale, some history on the property. And then they turn that information over to you in the form of a property lead sheet. Some of them are even kind enough to take photos. And then you can use that information and pursue that seller and hopefully turn it into a deal. If you do turn it into a deal, then you pay your bird dog a finder's fee or a bird dog fee. It's a standard bird dog fee. Well, I guess there really isn't a standard bird dog fee, but um, we pay 500 bucks for a bird dog to send us a lead that turns into a deal. Some people pay uh, less than that, some may pay more, so you know, it just depends on the investor. But uh, bird dogs are a good source of leads, so you know, if you can uh, start talking or finding out who the bird dogs are in your area, then that would be a good source for sellers of real estate. And you know, the good thing about bird dogs is that they're free, the leads are free, you don't have to pay them until you close on the sale of the property. At that time, you pay the bird dog. So. Good question, Kim. The next question is from Jamal, my good friend Jamal Jafrian. We talk on Facebook sometimes. Jamal's question is, what is the best way to find sellers that actually have a house that's a deal? I have considered free and clear leads and absentee landlords, just unsure which ones to market to and how. Well, Jamal, that's a kind of an open-ended question because there are so many different people that you can market to and there's deals, wholesale deals in every single list. There's uh, free and clears, absentee homeowners, tired landlords, divorces, bankruptcies, probates, zip codes, code violations. Uh, there's not really any particular list that you're going to find better leads than the other. The real point, Jamal, is to implement a marketing plan for one or two of those people and be consistent with it. Just continue to market to those people every week or every month and you will get deals out of those leads. Now as a, as a personal preference, I like probates. Free and clear leads are they're okay, but they're more for some of your owner financing uh, type of transactions. Uh, so I do like probates, unsafe structures, code violations, divorces are good. Uh, you're going to find some, sh you know, a lot of short sales in all of these types of lists. But the key is to be consistent. Choose one or two lists that you want to market to and uh, do it on a regular basis. Uh, you can't give up on one list until you've mailed 500 to 1,000, 1,500 pieces even to determine whether or not that, that list is going to work for you. And even, you know, follow up with, with additional pieces. So, you know, the key to a good response rate is following up and mailing them more than one piece of mail. And uh, after the third or fourth time, you're going to start getting some hits and the leads will start to surface. So consistency really is, is the key, the identifier here for, for the best deals. 
The next question is from Mark. Not sure where Mark's from, but Mark says, I've been wholesaling for three years and I've sold one deal. How can I filter out non-serious buyers? Wow. Mark. 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 You've been wholesaling what for three years? If you've been wholesaling, wholesaling for three years and you've only sold one property, then you're not wholesaling. It sounds like you're beating a dead horse or you're after the wrong types of sellers or you're buying them wrong or something's not going right. Um, I do have a method for filtering out serious buyers. Um, I'd like to talk about your problem with wholesaling for three years and only having one deal. Maybe, you know, that's another show. That's, an, that's another topic. But uh, to filter out non-serious buyers, um, I send them through a funnel, uh, meaning before they ever get to talk to me and make an offer on the property, damn, no see -ums. Before they ever make an offer on the property, they've been out to see the property, they've been in it, they've looked at it, they know the condition, they need to pull their own comps, you know, all of the research has to be done, and uh, they're ready to make an offer to me. The number one way that I filter out serious from non-serious buyers is a binder check. If they are uh, willing to give me a thousand dollars non-refundable binder, to me, they're serious. Um, if they don't want to put up a binder to secure the deal and lock it down, then they're probably tire kickers or newbies or, you know, don't have intentions of closing. And that's really what you want when you've got somebody who says they're interested in, in buying your property. You want them to close because, you know, the time, the clock is ticking from your contract period. You have to close by a certain date. You want them to do the same thing. So uh, lock it down with cash, deposit, non-refundable. That's really the best way, you know, to, to weed them out. So um, I've ran into problems where if they don't give me a binder, you know, those are, are the ones that always fall through. They're the ones that leave me hanging at the closing table and we don't want that. So make sure you collect the binder and you'll, you'll close more deals. You'll find your, their close rate is higher with your buyers. Again, that looks like that's about all we have time for today is those questions. I hope that um, helps all of you in your quest for wholesaling properties. Make sure you send in any other questions that you have, propertymob.com. Click on Ask a Question in the right-hand sidebar. Watch the show next week, and remember to bookmark me at the bottom under Sharing is Sexy, and hit the Recommend button for Facebook. See you in the lounge next week.